In the weeks since George Floyd was killed while in custody of Minneapolis police, protests have broken out worldwide, igniting conversations on race, police brutality, and systemic injustice in the U.S. These conversations are everywhere, in our news, our communities, our homes, which leads to the question, how do we discuss race with our kids? It's not easy to look at uh, what is happening on our street. Chol Dor is a refugee from Sudan. He explains that racism is a daily reality that he's still trying to navigate with his kids. They know people are protesting, and they know the reason why. Sometimes the police are not like doing what their job is supposed to be. Conversations like the doors for many Black, Indigenous, and families of color are not new. Why am I still, why are we still having those conversations? Since the beginning, since we were brought here, we've had to teach our children how to be safe. And it's so, so exhausting. Enrica So is a mother living in Cincinnati. She took her kids to some protests taking place in her neighborhood. You don't know what could happen. They're like always, they could find any reason to arrest you or harm you or something. My oldest son asked to come down. And usually he um, takes the back seat and um, uh, nothing's going to happen to me. But this time he was really affected by it. And because of that, I had to bring him down. In Massachusetts, Angelica and Marcus Crosby are having similar conversations with their young family. In the process of choosing a good school system, we unfortunately really had to choose white communities. So we had to have the conversation within ourselves. Okay, we're doing it. We're going to choose a white community. What does that mean for our children? And then kindergarten rolled around and it was walking into orientation and realizing my child is the only black child in the room or person of color, period. And I, I cried, but I knew it had to be done. And for Cameron's sake, he has to learn to speak a certain way, to dress a certain way, to commit a certain type of culture in order to be successful, successful in the United States, in Massachusetts, right? He has to adapt, he has to assimilate. While these conversations are not new for many Black, Indigenous, and families of color, white parents are learning the importance of discussing race with their kids at a young age. Rebecca Latham recently fostered her first big conversation about race with her eight and nine-year-old kids. Mothers of color have to have really uncomfortable conversations with their children every single day about staying alive. And, and my kids are never gonna have to hear that from me uh, but that doesn't mean that they shouldn't hear from me how important it is that they take a stand. In Vermont, the LaFrance family is also learning how to promote educational conversations about race. They were wondering, you know, what the signs mean. It is a sensitive subject, but it's not something that we want to shy away from. When they ask questions, we just try to be honest with them. I'm glad they are asking the questions, mm -hmm. and I'm proud that they're asking the questions because it's an opportunity for them to learn about racism about protesting and what it means. What all of these families emphasize is that these conversations really start at home. Black families like, have to have this conversation. They have it because it is what keeps their children safe and what keeps their children alive. And the problem for many, um, many families right now is that they didn't learn this the first time around because our schools don't teach about race. You have to say something to your kids. You have to tell them what is happening. Don't assume that they, um, that they don't know or that they don't care. Because one thing that I learned was that by not talking to my children about this, about racism, they were getting the signal that because it wasn't happening to them, that it didn't matter. Starting conversations is one thing, but we want to explore how parents can ensure diversity and racial equity become a priority at home. It starts with understanding where racial bias stems from. It's understanding that, again, for 400 years, Black people have undergone inherent oppression. The way that we stop this malicious and disgusting cycle is having open, transparent, raw conversations with our kids. You have to talk about the quality of life that everyone deserves. You can't you can't fix what we don't talk about and brush under the rug. Once you've learned the history, you can begin to answer questions and start positive conversations. Start like, you know, how do you feel about the situation? Um, let's talk about it in detail. 
Do, do you understand what's going on? If it's a small child and they're talking about skin color or something, then talk to them in that frame. If they're teenagers and they have different feelings about it and they want to talk about political action and that sort of thing, then that's the frame I think you want to talk to them in. At the end of the day, we know that racism is a learned behavior. Ensuring your child is surrounded by an accurate reflection of our country's community is important to continue in conversations. Reading books about diversity, having books with different colors of individuals, different you know people of color in the books that the kids are reading can help them understand. And really, we're talking about teaching empathy and being able to put ourselves in other people's shoes. And that's really important, I think. The thing about it that we do know is that really racism is learned. It's not something that kids are born with or that's innate. Kids are always curious about differences. So they might go up and ask a question about a person's hair or about their skin color. And I think a frank answer about that can be helpful. Parents, if they hit a hot button and they see themselves speaking or they hear the words coming out of their own child's mouth, they might realize that the child's mirroring some of the things that they're saying. And I think at that point, it's a good sort of self-check. Do you have dolls that are, show a diverse uh, representation? Because they really do get the idea that what they see is, is what they're supposed to see. But I think early on, if they see a world that's diverse and they have experiences with children from different cultural backgrounds, then it's something we don't even need to really worry about as much as they get older. Kids are like sponges. They're so smart. And what you see, they see. The sooner you start these conversations, the easier it'll be to keep them going. Every night I pray about they should be treated there. For more resources on how to chat with your kids about race and the Black Lives Matter movement, check the links in our description.